interestingly, with both Dignitas and the rally journey, of course, COVID came somewhere along the yeah, way. Yes. <laughs> um, and none of us were prepared for that. Yeah. Um, so, Both institutionally mm, and also as a set of mm, like the community of practice, mm, it, it must have thrown mm, a lot of things off. Cuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and especially for, for us as education actors, mm -hmm. typically for almost all rally members, definitely mm -hmm. for us at Dignitas, mm -hmm. our work happens in schools. Yeah. And schools were closed for almost an entire year. Yeah, so there's no more physical <laughs> learning. No more in-person mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. um, so where are the learners, where are the teachers, where are the school leaders, all these people who are core to how we work. Mm. And at Dignitas, what it caused us to do with a real sense of urgency mm -hmm. was to be agile in mm -hmm. how we think about what it is we're trying to achieve. What did that, what that look like? Um, in some ways, again, it was another change management mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. All of us on our team was working from home. Mm -hmm. You remember how? Mm -hmm. And um, things went in, in Kenya that we were all living lives normally mm -hmm. on a Friday and by Monday everything was mm -hmm. shut down and mm -hmm. we were in lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, other countries had like a two week warning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think it was the right decision, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's so we didn't have time to prepare. We didn't have time to sit as a team and strategize. Mm -hmm. Um, and so all of a sudden our team was working remotely, something mm. we're not used to. Mm. Trying to function around Slack and Zoom and Meets mm. and figure out which mm. platform works for mm. us as a team. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to figure out what this means for programming, what this means for funders. Um, you know as well as I do that if you can't deliver on your funding agreements, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yep. <laughs> and if delivering on your funding agreements means you're supposed to be in schools, yeah. but schools are closed mm. and because of public health, you can't even mm. go. <laughs> and not all funders are willing to be flexible yeah. enough to, to change mm. or, mm. or waive their, yeah. you know, their resources yeah. to, to allow for... As a leader of an organization, there mm. was a very kind of explicit pressure to make sure everybody still has a job yeah. three months, six months, a year from now. Exactly. Um, and it's interesting. I often speak to, to other leaders about that season. And to some extent, we're still in that season. Mm -hmm. And there was so much talk about self-care mm -hmm. and um, yeah, protecting your own emotional well-being. And, and so much of me thought as a leader, can you really do that mm -hmm. when all of this pressure is on you? Mm -hmm. um, and can you strike that balance mm -hmm between your own well-being and making sure, for, at that point for us, 17 people kept their jobs. Mm -hmm. And of course there were leaders looking at 300 or 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, That coupled with this sense of urgency around our work that literally we know if children are not in school, there are some who will not survive mm -hmm. and some who will not eat. Yeah. And others who the learning loss will simply be so significant that they'll mm -hmm. never get back on track. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it, it, it was interesting to struggle to strike that balance mm, mm. Um, between kind of self-care as a leader, keeping myself healthy enough mm -hmm. to be there for the team and to do what needed to be done. Be there for your own. Yes, and mm. my kids and the family mm. wise mm. trying to negotiate a whole mm. bunch of stuff as well. Mm. Um, and at some point homeschooling, mm. which, yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, so, so yeah, huge amount of pressure, I think, on leaders through, mm. through that kind mm. of season and that shock to mm. the system. Mm. So being willing to be agile, mm -hmm. but I think that again comes full circle back to being focused on the problem yeah. and not the solution. And designing around the exactly. problem. Exactly. Because yeah. if we were focused on the solution, mm. we would have been stuck at, we have to be in schools, we can't be in schools, what do yeah. we do? We can't deliver a solution. Yeah. But we were focused on our problem, mm. which is that children don't always have the opportunity they deserve to mm. thrive and succeed. Mm -hmm. That problem still exists yeah. and in fact was deepened and exacerbated it, it got, in so many yeah, ways. It got amplified a yep. lot through COVID. Exactly. Mm. So the question then became, what do we know about our solution, about the schools that we partner with? What do we know about our communities that allows us to still address that problem, mm -hmm. even with all of these restrictions? Mm -hmm. um, and what we kept saying was our vision has not changed mm -hmm. how we deliver on our solution is, is what, what needs to adjust evolve, yeah um, and so our team worked extremely hard and mm -hmm. um, we pretty much redesigned almost all of our work and um, to be able to deliver it either online or remotely mm -hmm. recognizing the digital challenges mm -hmm. of many of the communities access, we work in technology <laughs> access um access mm -hmm. to technology digital literacy mm -hmm. but the biggest one mm -hmm. that we weren't prepared for mm -hmm. digital confidence mm -hmm. the confidence of teachers of parents of school leaders mm -hmm. to embrace this new world of technology mm -hmm. to to 
figure out how to do more with their phone than just make calls. Um, that in itself was a huge piece. And what's a barrier to that confidence? Mm -hmm. um, so we saw it in two ways. We saw it with teachers and school leaders, mm -hmm. and partly it's just experience and exposure, mm. what they're empowered to do, mm. who they see around them, mm. how that's modeled. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we saw a big difference between the way our urban school partners engaged mm. and rural school partners because mm. the urban communities were just much more exposed mm. to, to what was possible. Mm. Mm. Um, so, so building that confidence was a big piece. Again, if we found a school where there was one or two teachers who were very kind of savvy with technology, mm. um, they could lead the others mm -hmm. and build their confidence. Mm. Um, with parents, we found, um, because of course now we had to work very closely with parents because mm -hmm. children were at home. Mm. We found that one of the biggest barriers to their confidence was their own education. Mm. One, either their own level of education. Mm -hmm. So knowing themselves, maybe they didn't finish primary or didn't finish secondary. Mm. How can they help their child learn when they don't have much? They themselves, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But also those who did finish their education, but think my kid does CBC, I did 844. Mm. I don't know what this new mm. CBC is all about. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of struggle of parents to get their head around what their children were learning. Mm. And I remember one of the most striking conversations we had um, was actually with a, a professor um, who I think now is at um, Egerton University, but mm. he was telling us how his mother could not read or write a single mm. word. Mm -hmm. But mm. she's the one who enabled him to succeed in his education mm. by sitting with him as he did homework and mm. um, telling him stories that helped him to learn. And mm. um, she developed a way of communicating with the teachers at school, a color-coded communication system. Mm. Um, that if they put a green mark next to something in the book, then she should talk to her child about that mm. and help him explain it further. Now, she had no idea what he was talking about, mm. but just that role of the parent, of the caregiver, to sit with the child and mm. be invested in their learning. Mm. It's actually, um, evidence shows the engagement of a learner is the biggest determinant mm. of a child's success mm. outside of school. Mm. Um, so, so building that confidence that as parents, you don't need to have all the answers, mm. <laughs> but um, you can still support your child's learning. Mm. Um, so, so confidence, as I say, played out both for teachers and school leaders and, and for parents and how they come together to support children yeah. during that season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And you've been able to um, wade it through, mm -hmm. wave it through mm -hmm. up until here we are now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when you project into the future. Mm. <laughs> what do you see for 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 Deborah? Yeah.